Well, Patrick Head, welcome to the FIA Sport Conference here in Geneva. Obviously, you stepped out of full-time Formula One action a few years ago, but how are you enjoying the 2017 regulations and the way Formula One is evolving at the moment? Uh, it's certainly quite a change, mostly driven by the, the bigger tyres, and, uh, and I think it's welcome. Uh, I'm not sure that it's all the way there, but the drivers particularly seem to like it because they're not uh, driving on tenterhooks all the time, waiting for their tyres to give up on them, and uh, so they can push a bit harder. Uh, and the drivers enjoy it, and basically the racing's close, but whether that's to do with the rules or just because Ferrari got their act together after a bit, uh, I couldn't say. Obviously you had a long and illustrious career winning many world championships for drivers and teams as the technical boss of, of the Williams team. But also in that period you were responsible for a lot of technical, technical innovations. I mean you flattened everybody with your active car with Nigel Mansell and Alain Prost for example in the early 90s. With Renault you were very heavily involved in all sorts of advanced uh, valve technologies and things like that. Which Can you pick out a couple of innovations that you're most proud of from your F1 career? Well, you mentioned the active ride programme, and I think that's probably the most outstanding one. Uh, and not really the technology, it was the, the, the interest was working with a lot of bright young men on a programme that started in early 1985 and didn't really, although it did win Monza in 1987, uh, it wasn't really quite ready for introduction, so it was a bit of a lucky win. Um, but it, it sort of culminated in the two championships of 1992 and 1993. And it was a, a very enjoyable program with steps forward and every now and then a step back. But uh, it was a great pleasure as an engineer working with other engineers on that program. I mean, there were others, but uh, uh, a couple of which got banned. Um, uh, before their introduction with uh, fear that they would either be too costly or or force ev other people to go in the same direction. Uh, the uh, CVT that we were working on with Van Dorn that was actually in testing unfortunately got banned in 1993 before it was we were able to race it which was a pity. Uh, and the six-wheeler which although it would have been uh, a big technical challenge to get it down to weight uh, showed uh, all the signs in testing that it was going to set new standards from a performance point of view. Obviously the, the current direction of travel in, in motor racing and Formula One is electrification. You've got an electric series, pure mm -hmm. electric series. Formula One has gone very much down the hybrid path and you've kept your hand in being involved on, on the hybrid side. How do you see that and do you see it as the way forward for automotive and motorsport or do they start to split do you think uh, in that sense? Well, I think it, it raises a few questions and maybe the recent Le Mans itself asks a few questions about the direction and, and what motorsport is really for and what people are interested in. Uh, you've got to remember that when hybridisation came to Formula One and into uh, sports car racing, uh, Formula E didn't exist. Um, and now Formula E, strongly taken up by quite a few manufacturers, is really probably a strong forum in which the technology of electric drive, uh, battery, uh, energy storage in batteries is being driven forwards. Um, and you have to ask whether then the other formulas using hybrid uh, involvement of electric drive uh, are really justified from the point of view of cost. Um, and it was interesting that in the recent Le Mans there were just uh, five hybrid LMP1 cars, uh, a number of which fell by the wayside and it was only by chance that uh, one of those cars happened to win at the end. Not a bit more than chance, but, but uh, it, there was only one ahead of a whole string of LMP2 cars that were very quick in themselves. So it's certainly a question and I'm sure needs debate, but certainly the Formula E is focusing development on electric drive. Whether the 
hybridization of other vehicles is justified in motorsport is a question to be discussed, I think. So final question then, Patrick, looking to your crystal ball, what will elite motorsport look like a decade from now? from a technical point of view, what would it be? I don't think I've ever been any better than anybody else in looking into the crystal ball going forward. But um, I think the viewing public, whether through television or at the track, or through the sort of many multimedia means of following motorsport, probably only 10% of them are, are enthused by the technology. I mean, they're a genuine 10% and probably a very continuous uh, people following motorsport. But really, it's the drivers and the challenge between drivers that enthuses people, particularly if people have national heroes as drivers, then you can see that the interest is much, much higher. Uh, and I think motorsport has got to look to that. And if you actually look at the amount of motorsport, let's say, taking place in the UK uh, each weekend, so much of it is retro, is looking back at Formula 2 in the 1960s, Formula 3, different things, is retro racing. And it's mainly because uh, the cost is very, very much less. So yes, it's, it's open for debate and uh, um, I, I'm sure it'll make interesting subject of debate.